now on the topic how to become a great public speaker this is a very interesting topic and i am so excited about it we have a very well-versed personality to take us through this this webinar and before i introduce him we are also launching our website today. Vista Edu website is live, and I want us to do this activity. Screenshot this and put it on your socials. So you can put it on your Twitter, your Instagram, WhatsApp status. Let's trend with this right now. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this right now. Yes, yeah, so join um, screenshot this and then put it on your status wherever you are. That we are live. This time I do website is live. Let's do this. So I'm allowing about two minutes for that. And then we we'll proceed. Yes, I think you are the only one who cannot hear. So what you can do is you go back and then join again. Right. Thank you so much for engaging in this activity. And so as we are live, I'll show you um, how the website is. So this is the Vista Edu website. Hooray! <laughs> yes, yeah, so when you come here, we encourage you to join the wait, wait list by clicking on this. It will take you to it will take you to a Google document where you input your details for us so that once the app is ready, we'll send it to you and then you'll be notified. All right. Okay. 
um, this is the home page. This is about us. So we also have our partners here with us. We have the SRC, WACBIP, GAPSA, and then we also partner with the SDG, the Presidential SDG, and then Political Science Students Association, Ghana Tech Lab. Yes, so these are our partners. This is about us. So we are a social media based, educational, mobile, and web based app for tertiary level students to share their educational journeys. I hope you can see the, the screen I'm sharing. I'm sharing it again. Okay. All right. All right. Sorry about that, Hitch. Okay, so um, as I said, this is about us. So we are a social media based, educational, mobile, and web based app for tertiary level students. So we are targeting students in the tertiary level, even though we know that other students from other levels will benefit from the platform. But the features are going to be tailored for tertiary students. So we are going to allow students to share their educational journeys, share, collaborate on projects. Wherever you are in the world, you can just collaborate on a project, participate in a survey for a project, and so on and so forth. Access gamified learning features and impact other students worldwide with your experiences and your contribution. All right, so we are born as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and we embrace the new era of students who are not limited by their boundaries on their impact and career journey. So our mission, as I mentioned earlier, we are targeting SDG4, and we want to reach all the continents of the world. So this is just a brief of how the app, the MVP or the minimum viable product of the platform is going to look like. So this is the research or the gamified learning approach where you just swipe and then you have access to the features of the platform. So if you're familiar with TikTok, it's going to be very easy to use. And we're also incorporating a bit of LinkedIn where, you know, when the app, when the platform is ready, you see it. I don't want to quit your appetite for nothing. But I mean, we'll be launching next month too. So expect that as well. All right. And then this is the profile of the user fe the feature. All right. So we are about collaboration and learning embracing a new era of learning and this is the team of co-founders and then you can also um, have access to our social media pages i mean we are social media platforms so we have to have access to the social media pages we have youtube linkedin instagram facebook and then twitter all right so that's about our website and we are so excited to have you all on board. So back to today's today's webinar. I hope you have seen the all right. Okay. We have a very intel, intellectual person to take us through the webinar. So I'll read his profile and then I'll invite him to to talk. So if you're excited about it, let, let me see you in the chat session putting an emoji a text saying you're excited about the webinar i want this to be as interactive as possible and i'll be reading your messages okay i'm waiting yay <laughs> all right i want to see the excitement in the chat box let's do this let's do this Okay, Precious is good there, Elo. All right, all right. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for participating in this short activity. So, Elon Quashid, and he's a young man with great poise to impart knowledge. He's a Bachelor of Arts graduate of the University of Ghana in Human Resource Management and Psychology, where he served in various leadership capacities. So you know he is very, very, very acquainted to this. All right. He, um, what was I? 
leadership capacities, exactly, popularly as the General Secretary of the University Christian Fellowship. His passion to raise a generation of intellectuals and well-rounded Christians led him to set up a digital library, Christian Books Hub. Personally, I'm part of this library, and it has really been very helpful for my reading journey. All right, so this Christian Books Hub was to help in this course, and in the year 2019, that's when he set up this digital library. He's currently a leader in a Baden Christian Youth Ministry, Eternal Springs, where he continues to lead the charge of the gospel. And I have the singular honor of inviting Emmanuel Elon Kashi to, tell, to talk to us on public speaking. Hi, Elon. Hi, Aquili. All right, over to you. Thank you so much for accepting this. All right, the pleasure is all mine. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, thank you very much, Akweli, uh, once again. Um, I'm really honored, I would say really honored, and I consider it a, a great privilege to be to be on here. Um, I've, I've been seeing quite a lot about the whole journey of Vitsayodu, and um, I'm impressed that already you have a website rolled out, and uh, I want to believe that this is only the beginning of far, far greater things to come. And I'm glad I'm, 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 I'm partaking in the, in the very early stages of this journey. Okay. I, I, was, I was going to say, let us pray, but I realized we are not in the church. So I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll just have to move on. All right. So this evening, um, I'm speaking to you all on public speaking. And one thing you realize is that it's the one thing that everybody seems to dread. And I'll go into that very shortly in the next slide. And Aquila, if you can go to the next slide for me, please. The, the very first slide, please. I'm sorry, it has changed, but I don't think it has. So I'll share it all over again. And then I'll correct that. I hope it's showing now. All right, yes, it's it's showing now, please it is. Okay. So so I, I was saying that the, the fear of the public speaking generally, it is the one thing that everybody seems to just dread in a sense. And I remember, I remember I was sharing with Aquili one time when I was speaking at, at Overhead, at please, that um, I recount my, my journey personally becoming the speaker I am. Although, obviously, like anybody who, who is in a skill, who has a skill, you never think you really are at the apex yet. There's this whole long continuum of growth you should have at the back of your mind, anybody at all, if you want to become anything at all in future. We call it a growth mindset. Now, I, I remember very vividly um, one of the encounters. Um, there was a time I, I had to do um, a spoken word when I was in senior high school. And that was the first time I was performing before a crowd doing a spoken word, I mean. Now, when I, when I get there and I'm called on to deliver my piece, I suddenly just freeze. And it's almost like the whole encounter just seems to become, I just feel so heavy and I, I, I just lose track of my lines and my words. And this is a very common feeling for all of you when you've probably rehearsed for a thing, you've probably played the lines in your head, you've probably practiced, practiced, yes, and you get to the stage and then you are afraid. And normally for that reason, people play over the last memory or the very recurring memory of their speaking, speaking episodes. And for that reason, they end up dreading public speaking. And so that is one of the common problems you find that People generally just put themselves in a bracket and say, oh, I am not a good public speaker. I, it's not for me. 
But one thing I want to just make clear in this meeting, and that's one thing you would actually be convinced about at the end of this meeting, is that it is not a thing for a kind of people. It is not safe for only extroverts. It is not safe for the people who are naturally born leaders, as, as, as you call it. It's something we all can learn. And that is why it's called a skill. And so by the end of this webinar, um, I'm convinced that everyone here would actually end up with that skill under their sleeves. And you'll be able to say that, okay, no matter the occasion, no matter the moment, I will be able to rise up and, and deliver a public speech when called on to. Um, the slide has left. Can you please get it back on the screen, please? Akure, why not make him a cool admin so that he can easily show it by himself? Um, kindly go to the very last, the, the very first one, sorry. Yeah, let, let me just wrap up. The very first one. All right, so now they say that um, second to death, public speaking is one of the most dreaded things in the world. Actually, it's not so much of a statistically proven fact, but it's a theory that has been, been around for quite some time. And you would understand why people say that. You, you get it. You find grown men who cannot speak up when they have to speak up. And you find boys who can't propose to a girl just because um, they, 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 they are afraid to, 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 to speak. And it's a very common thing, and it's that dreaded. Now, as to whether it's statistically true, um, that's debatable, they say. But you know for a fact that it is common, and that is more or less the point of what they say, that it is that common and that pervasive. Now, you also know that over in the workplace, you, you find that many of us, I'm sure most of the people listening, um, at least about half of you would be people who are on the job market or in the workplace, you'd find that people are, one, in, in, in an interview session, you are unable to articulate what you know already, and that prevents you from convincing people, and moreover, you find out that even when you get into a job, you find that there are people who have the same degree, for instance, people who have the same qualification, people who may have even lesser years of experience, but they end up landing or getting a higher pay cut or higher salaries or higher wages than his or her counterpart who has similar or maybe a higher qualification. And public speaking is one of the things. In management, you see, one thing that this will do for a person is that if you are someone who has a fear of public speaking, you naturally shy away from leadership positions. And so, for instance, if there's a promotion due you, you either would not put yourself up in the position or you'd be overlooked because about 50% or 40% of management is talking to the, your subordinates, is communicating is getting ideas put out and you need to know how to speak in public are, are, are you with me so it's um, were asked to be a teacher and you are told oh what's the answer very well but you keep Hand up, and she said it, and oh, I miss. Um, the next slide, please.
Hello, hello. The, the, the next slide. While we wait, so. I mentioned that in money, in communicating, what you do is communicate and the fee of to be born in a corporate setting, you should not just. Hello, hello. If the person leaders of my I put up, but I mean that public. Hello, hello. I hate, to, I hate to disrupt you, but the line is breaking. We can barely hear you well. Hello, hello. Over and over again. Hello? Hello, As can you, you hear yourself? me? Naturally. When they mention in the in write up, in the teaser to the means literally exceptional public speakers come to the Christian Jesus. You look up the Bible's time when Paul was for uh, and the guy so much. That the king, Paul, much learning has made our Roman culture. In Okay, so um, Elam is having a challenge and you join us again. Yes, so for those who just joined, we are talking about public speaking and we are tackling on the fear of, I don't want to take um, the spotlight from Elam. Elam has joined again, so he will take us again. Elam, can you hear me? Uh, hello. Yes, it's much, much better. Thank you. So you may proceed. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. It's still not clear, but we can hear you. Yes, 
All right. Um, Sorry about that. I'm told Martin was very here. Um, I'll recap. All right, um, yeah, I'm really sorry about that. Our speaker is having a network challenge and um, he will rejoin again and then continue the conversation. But we are so glad you are still with us and we apologize for the hitches. Okay, so while he is getting back um, along, It goes on. Okay, all right. All right, please hear me, please. Hello, good I Hi, everyone. Okay, so our speaker is having a challenge with this internet issue, I mean, internet um, connectivity, but he's on the phone call with me. So he'll continue the conversation 
here, you the next voice you hear will be him. I hope he can around this and then make this webinar successful. All right, so hello, if you can hear me. Rise to 
young and he's young to use it. And that is will not be because of anything, but that's because you are able to master this one skill. Okay. And most people, even when it comes to um paperizers, I know people are able I, I know a woman who has been at a wet for about four years and So how much did she pay for her masters? How much was the school fees for the masters that she actually um and so we find why did she not be able to get a clear school? She's like it's how I mean it's because I mean who can kill and it was to be fine. We didn't talk in the name of being respectful. They basically put fear in us. And so we cannot bend and we cannot be on our mind. We always rationalize, theorize, and end up intellectualizing things and say this public And at the end of the day, things pass you by. That for me is a perfect example. So about four years of being paid a thousand things. And although the four years there that pay a hundred and twelve things into the amount so deep. And that is one I have exposed to. And I realized that it's common. And so, how do you have the testing go along this and define the nice of the common? Now, I'm not going to tell you that if you can become a good public speaker, you will end up standing out from about 70% of the world. Like the Coca Cola 
that you used to speak back in the day. So when you make that pro star, what you do is that you are exercising your lips, that's the that's the effect on your lips. And the other effect is you actually also make to also the power, the cord in your throat. People don't know that your own box works just like uh, a guitar or any instrument that uses the weight, any 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 of those kind of instruments. It works just in that way. So you can actually if you see for a guitar, if you know if you know anybody who does listen to run the way that you look at the theme the the guitar sometimes. You can actually tune your voice. You cannot convert an acoustic guitar to a guitar. No. But you can tune an acoustic guitar so the sound that comes from it sounds nicer and more refined. And you can tune a bass guitar so the sound that comes from it sounds nicer and more refined. So you must learn to tune your voice. And one of the ways to tune your voice is through the core exercises. Um, if, 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 if you get the chance, I'll, I'll send out a link to um, a TED book which will actually give you um, a whole rundown on how to do these, these exercises and that would be of really, really good help to so you. Now, the next thing is the pitch of the voice. You find that there are people and they end sounding offensive, sounding rude, sounding proud, and sounding proud when they never meant to sound arrogant or proud. And sadly, in the case with a lot of women, a short thin voice, and especially for those who have a short thin voice, they would try to clean and by screaming, they read the pitch of their voice. And by reading the pitch of your voice, they, they end up sounding offensive and so domineering and people who now can move up to you. It's really, really common. Now, most of them don't even know that that's their problem. They, they don't know that because they wish that they read the pitch of their voice. That is how come um, people just keep you up when they begin to you or people just have a problem with them when they begin talking. So the pitch of your voice is very, very cheap. So the pitch is about how high or how low the volume of your voice is. And you must be able to check that. Otherwise, your, your speaking will not have the desired result that you want to have. The next point of the point is of resonance. Hey, resonance. Now, resonance has to do with the, the voice, how it spread across your pit or across your mood, if you can be always speaking. Now, a resonance really teaches you something. We typically speak from two places. There's what we call the good voice and the chest voice. Now, your throat voice, okay, when you speak with your throat, you normally come up with high sounds, with high pitches. Normally, when we sing, we sing with our throat. Normally. So, when you speak with your throat, you normally come up with high sounds. Now, the other place you can speak at is your chest. So when you speak with your chest, the voice actually sounds more, it resonates better because your voice is deeper. So people who have a strong chest voice normally end up having a strong throat and they almost have a bass in their voice. Yeah, than there is around your throat. But for most people, 
they are not aware of this. Most people think they stick to when they are it. So, you find, for instance, somebody is, in, is supposed to give a lecture or is supposed to talk in a room, and their voice doesn't reach the end of the room. This is normally one of the problems. So they end up, if, instead of resonating their voice, so that so their voice spreads around their, 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 their chest, they end up rather lifting their voice and trying to shout. No, that is wrong. When you end up shouting, you would end up really messing things up and you end up losing yourself and you, 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 the, 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 the presence you want to have will not be achieved. So you must learn to resonate and let the voice spread around the chest area. Now this is simple. It is all about focus. So in your mind, picture the voice coming from your chest and not from your throat. So it, 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 it's, just, it's just as simple as that. So imagine that the words you are speaking is coming from the chest and not, and not your throat. And much more also, you need to relax. If you speak in a haste, you see, when you're speaking in a haste, your voice becomes breathy. And the more breathy your voice is, the more fruity it is. So you need to relax and just allow. So the, 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 your speaking actually works with the, the wind, the air down there. So the air is just circulate. So as the air circulates, down there and it's it rather smooth. So I have to circle it down there very slowly. So you see me use that and then the speech just synthesizes and just comes out of your throat and it resonates better that way. Okay? Alright. Now next I will also now teach on um, um so I've mentioned um tone of voice, I mentioned I mentioned resonance, I mentioned now timber. Timber typically has to resonance. It's about the depth or the life level of the person in the voice. So uh, the more the voice resonates, the more timber it has. Okay, all right. Now, next again on the tips to actually become a better public speaker is on what I call monotony. Now, monotony is actually one of the most common things of public speakers. The problem you find in most people is that they speak in a monotone. Now, a monotone means that mono one, so that's a singular, and a tone. I mentioned tone earlier. Most people speak in a monotone. So, for instance, when you were in class, one, well, the common thing for most of us when we were younger, you read like, my name is Kwame Akea. My father's name is Kwame I come from Kwada. So, right. That is how we speak of we spoke when we were younger. And when you listen to this, you see, oh, this is so boring. Why? Because the human mind likes rhythm. It likes dynamics. It likes change. It, it doesn't like predictability. So it, when the human mind hears a monotone, automatically switch off. And those of us experience that in the university, when our lectures come before us, and they speak in this monotone, this air, and you wonder, doesn't this guy know he's boring? He's like, ah, no, this guy is very boring. Doesn't he know he's boring? No, they are not known. But, so, it's a problem because for most lectures, they're just actually just, they, they probably may be chill and thing in the head, and so just in their head, they're just rattling it down out. And you find also is a problem for most people also, so in what I mentioned, I'm the one giving called to give a, a speech say or on, on a speech and start giving it. You can't be sure the thing is So you see the thing so that you don't forget a line, so you don't forget a page. Do you understand? So because of that fear, we speak in that monotone, we speak in that slow, boring voice. Is someone following you up on YouTube? So you need to eliminate monotony from your voice. So this is how you speak instead. So instead of saying my name is Harvey Bill, you should learn to emphasize some words. So the words that are important, you have to emphasize them. So you find
find that somebody probably would say this that my name is Kwame Elu. Now, I'll be emphasized, the next thing you do is stretch somewhere. And that wasn't the secret of most journalists. When you watch the people on TV or when you hear the radio who give um, who are journalists and they make presentations and all, that's their secret. They emphasize somewhere and they and then they stretch other ways. They emphasize some words and then they stress other words. So, they emphasize some words and then they stress other words. So, so you, you, when, you, when you are able to master the art of monotony and prosody, you would realize that it would make your speaking a bit more lively and engaging. If you if you speak in a monotone, you sound like a bit like a computer. And no one wants to listen to your computer because a computer is plain robotic with no emotion. But when you vary the tone of your voice, emphasize, stretch some words, then you're adding energy and you're making your words come alive. And you're making it a bit more humane to the people. Are you with me? So monotony is the number one sin of public speaking. And when you eliminate it from your speaking, you are really, really very good to go. So if you can take out the monotone, you would really, really be blessed. Now, the next thing again, I have a lot of things that I actually said about I'll just wrap it all up and summarize. The next thing again is people of speech fitness. Now, speech fitness are what you find someone who's done. Um, 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 I mean, oh, I mean, um, like, like, these are called speech fillers. These are speech fillers because we use them in between, at the beginning, at the end of speeches, and when we are out of ideas, and something we are doing just to nervous. These things actually spot the details of speech. And if you a good public speaker, if somebody who can Drink line, speak for minutes and ending, and not repeat themselves with these speech fillers or have them coming all around or all along in the speech. If you speak with speech fillers, they're just showing the audience that you are not confident, they're not certain of what you are saying, and it, it makes your your speech very uncomfortable. Recently, I was telling someone, some time ago, I was telling someone that when I watched our president, Namadu, during the, 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 the times when Kovic was at the speaking corner and he was giving addresses, one thing I admired about him was how he could speak for minutes, close to an hour at some time, and he could keep you glued for the whole length of the time. How? It, it, I just have imagined the rhetorical problems. He was so good. And he was the best I've seen in, in, our, in, our, in, our, in our political land. So, 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 so good. And that's not something you, you, you find very common. And he speaks of M's and S's and likes and that's just moving seamlessly. Someone will say, oh, he needs to be telling from the right point. If I give you a teleprompter and I tell you to, to, to read off a teleprompter, you will And you can see this, the pitch changing the call. Other people in mind who are president and heads of state and other things, they, they may similarly speak from a teleprompter or whatever, but you can tell the difference that this person has speech sound very scripted. Okay? So when you take that out, 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 out of your speech, it increases the, 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 how lively it is and brings more emotion. To it. The next thing again is, is now change of pace. You must learn to vary your pace while you speak. There are times when you must speak very quickly, and times when you must speak very slowly. As you speak, you must learn to know when the audience must relax and cut it off. 
You must learn to know when you should speed up things so that you get them engaged. And you must learn to know when you relax because this is a very important thing that you want them to hear. So change of it is very true. So you move fast and then you stop. You move fast and then you stop. Depending on what you are saying and depending on how you want the audience to take it, change of pace is key. So your pace, the speed at which you are speaking is key. People speak slowly, they say they are boring, and it's a fact. But then, there are times when you have to speak slowly. You can't be, I mentioned, you, you can't be giving a GD that speak very fast. I'm serious. You know, you don't you speak slowly. Well, you speak slowly, you are sounding solemn. When you sound solemn, you are appealing to that nature of people. So you are telling the person, very important, you should, you, should, you should listen to me, and you are appealing to that connection, that emotional connection to them. When you see boyfriends and girlfriends talking, they normally, they normally whisper things because a lot of what they come out to look because the more stolen a thing sounds normally, the more important it is. It's almost like an evolutionary psychology perspective that um, it, it, is, it is secretive, okay? And the more secretive a thing is, the more hidden a thing is, the more important of this perceived So in public speaking, change of pace is very, very, very you, you can pause and then you add power. You can pause and then you add power. You pause, you add pace. You pause, you emphasize your words. You pause, you move quickly. You pause, you move slowly. Some people need or they speak like uh, being changed so quickly without regard to smart, without regard to anything. When you do this, you won't have a free effect. So when you're giving a speech, you must also internalize the speech, or internalize the thing you want to speak about. And when you internalize the thing you want to speak about, it would make you. When you internalize the thing you want to speak about, it would make you much more effective by being relatable. Because the words have, have, have become one with your emotions. And when that happens, that is when you know when to pause. I want to slow down, I want to speak fast. When you don't do that, you can say things and they don't have the effect as you desire to to be. Okay? So ladies and gentlemen, um post up power, change of pace, and also the what we call inflection. Inflection is basically it is it, linked to do the whole thing about monotony and prosody. It's about the rise and fall of your words. So the more you add inflection to your speech, the better it is going to sound. So if you if you speak like I said in a flat tone, you would you would you would end up losing the word attention. And it would actually just snap out of the speech you are you are giving. Okay. Now, I also want to touch on body language, say body language. Now, body language, as what it is, is the language of the body. Social psychologists believe that about more than about half, or more than a half, because now 40% of your speech, maybe more, I think, I forgot the case, but maybe more of your speech is language. Now, they see that people are more convinced about how you say a thing than what you say. And when people are listening to you, they are looking at your body language to authenticate the thing you say. So when you hear someone speaking, imagine you asking someone questions or 
about an interview panel, you are an interview panel at the moment. You would want to look at their body language, and especially if you want to see whether they are being truthful or they are being more truthful. You want to observe their body language. You want to see whether they are speaking the truth or not. And how do you see that? Do you see whether, okay, are they fidgeting? Um, uh, are they being confident? How do you know whether they are being confident? Your arms. Why are your arms? Are they, are they folded up? Now, they they see the when arms are folded in the person, they shall be hiding something. Okay. Now, at the end, one rule of speaking, public speaking, is that your hands should always be around your chest. Why? Because when your hands are around your chest, they are close to your face, and people are looking into your face. So, are they looking into your face? Your hands. So, your arms should almost always be around your chest. They should be up there. Now, the other thing in body language as for you is that it makes your character a bit more grand. People who don't speak with their hands will barely ever look commanding or will barely ever look imposing or will barely ever have a leadership order around them. It doesn't happen. Your hands are so, so keen in speaking, you have no idea. And the other thing you could also end up about doing it that a good and bad way to do things. If you use your hands very well, also, Amy Cardi, Amy Cardi has a book, the name is A-M-Y, Cardi, Cardi, C-U-D-Y, Cardi, on body language. One thing she says is that body language actually is so key that people sometimes think that, oh, um, I'm feeling nervous, and because they feel nervous, they think that Everybody is very aggressive. That's why you think that when people can perceive your nervousness. You feel, you feel it's so powerful that everyone can see it. But it really isn't that true. A lot of the time when you are nervous, people can't really tell like that. So your mind not makes you feel okay. Everyone can see your nervous. And when that happens, you not begin to not keep on the pressure. But the best thing to do is you can train your body and coerce your body into feeling confident. So the confidence in that one won't just naturally just bring up. If you can, so there is the, the body posture you are giving off that is communicating to your body that you are nervous. So when you begin to give a body posture of somebody with confidence, your body will now think that you are confident. It's almost like a light heart, which actually doesn't work. So the next time you go on the stage, and you have to give a talk, and you feel nervous, what actors and actresses do before they come on stage is that they have these jumping drills and dancing drills they do just to stretch their bodies. You see the footballers, for instance, before they come on, on, on the pitch, they just jump their legs, they just jump, they just put themselves somewhere. They are trying to get their body to get in the mood, get in that confidence, so they want to get that adrenaline to rush. So as we do that, your body will not begin to think that, oh, I have confidence, and then it will just move up from there. What people you know is that if you don't do this, and you always want to feel confident before you act out, or before you speak, or before you know you can do that, you can deliver, you would always find yourself at a new day when it comes to speaking in public. So you must coerce yourself and put your hands out there, use the hand gestures, even facial gestures, raise your eyebrows a bit. You, you must use these things a lot. So your hands must be around your chest, they must be projected above like that, and people must be seeing your hands and they should be making gestures. You don't necessarily have to. Draw out the words you are saying with your hand. No. Uh, that is what we are saying. But then you move your hand and let them move up and down. That's absolutely the wrong way. I'll give you an example of a, of, of a, of a popular testing um, that embodies this. Trump. Trump is so powerful in speaking because Trump must have mastered the house of body language. Even facial gestures, if you so many, you can see that don't communicate a thousand messages. Okay? And you know, somebody comes to Trump, Michal, Ghana, what I think we 
had in Ghana was Jerry John Rawlings. Jerry John Rawlings similarly was so good a public speaker, and you would always see the tongues moving up and down. You don't see a good public speaker who doesn't use his hands. It, it, it doesn't happen. It does not happen. When you have the time of a little meeting, go on FedEx and look up FedEx public speakers. Every single one of them had their hands about them. And, and, and when, you, when you do this, it would, it would actually improve the, the, the power of your speech. So confidence is, is, is key. And confidence, eventually or essentially, would, would come from how you carry your body about and also mastering your craft. One of the reasons why people end up something in that speaking is that they don't look that stuff to and to. And because they don't look that stuff to and to, when while they are speaking, they are not, they are, they, it becomes easier for you to speak up, speak, speak up by being up in general life. But if you just have a chill and poor kind of thing, the least emotional aspect, the thing that will make sense in your head, and the fear, the most fear that is that fear paralyzes your mind. And you know, they call something that the flight response, right? The freeze of flight response. When you are free, your body either freezes or your body wants to flight, wants to run away from danger. Because when you get free, your body is perceiving danger. So if you just chew your, your material, you would put yourself at a disadvantage. You must rather internalize the things you want to talk about. That way, it would naturally fuel your confidence. And it is that simple. Anybody you see who does very, very well, uh, Obama is a classic example. Obama was noted as somebody who really used prepared speeches or really ever read a script when he was speaking. Why is that so? Because he internalized the stuff. His team was, yes, we can address. You, you would see a guy has a thing in him, and you're just speaking from what was within him. And people can tell when all that thing is from you, and you can generalize and you're giving it, them, giving it to them like that. And when it feels much more scripted. So your confidence doesn't only want to become even from how you present that out. To, to, to people. You look at someone like um, Rowan Atkinson, that's Mr. Dean, back on body language again. Well, you see Mr. Dean and just with his face, he communicates the message. Okay? And so all these things just make up and add up to the whole fabric of, 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 of public speaking. So, this um, I'm just basically trying to rally and try to draw your minds to the need for, for developing these skills. And one thing I'll also say is that people are so in a hurry to develop skills, not as well to get that thing, but you want to become made overnight. It doesn't work like that. These things take practice. I remember one time I met Nana Tassi, Nana Tassi was a poet. One of the two guys, I met Nana Tassi so so much, so I, 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 I told him I, I wanted to meet him. And so I, I had a session with him, I met him. And he told me one thing, that he met Hugh Mahela. And Hugh Mahela told him one thing as well, when he asked him what advice. And he said, Hugh Masakela told him, practice, practice, practice. There is no magic. In a South African accent, in a sense. He told him, practice, practice, practice. There is no magic. You must stand before your mirror sometimes and speak to yourself. You can take your vortex, uh, use vortex bottle, and just. Embody the, the moment. Put yourself in the moment. Put yourself out there and see yourself and picture yourself in an audience, in a crowd of people speaking. Yourself in a crowd of people speaking. Yourself in a crowd of people speaking. And as you, as you do that, 
they would give you like any other skill you would need to be able to practice for the reason that it is through practice you gain mastery so without consistently practicing you cannot gain mastery because a skill is different from a talent and public speaking is not a talent no one was born with the gift of public speaking it, it doesn't just come to you overnight even if you have the wrong people may have the wrong material like a good voice and naturally start their voice but if you don't put yourself consistently out there where you are making the mistakes you will find that you don't have the skill you might listen to this address and how and you might think that oh i i i have learned a thing or two and because of that i i am i am, I am now good to go uh, it, it doesn't work that way i remember myself um i went to university i joined i joined the investment benefit society and i i i i consented for the dg freshman debates and in that debate I was supposed to do a presentation proper hall. And the funny thing is, I only joined the debate team the night before the day of the contest. So I had a good preparation of the British debate style. Now you know that the debate we do are investing in the British Parliament debate style. Unlike what he did in senior school with a chairman, no, no. This is, this is, this is not my, this is not my the chairman kind of, this is more like a prime minister, uh, opposition, closing government kind of setting. Now, in that setting, I had very little idea about how that went. So when I went into the debate, I just did it because I wanted to get the excuse. But when I went to the debate, I really did not do so so well. Now, I said, okay, well, let me do public speaking. So I went into the public speaking category.
the audience have heard a lot and it's time for questions so i'll read out some of the questions that we got and then we'll see how best we would approach it all right so the first question is how to act how do i act on stage when speaking and i lose train of my thoughts how do I act on stage when speaking and I lose train of my thoughts? Okay, so I'm supposed to answer right now. Yes. Okay, um, so how do I act on stage when I lose train of my thoughts? So the first thing is you're now going to if you if I give it if I give it a simple answer, okay. Um if it, it depends on the setting, obviously. If you if you if you if you have, if you have a tablet or it does I can help you get the message. But it depends on the person. There are things you see, things are not going to be back. It's not just the most important thing. How do you keep the message? Just to try and lighten up and get your thoughts back in line. So you could maybe get your water and then have a drink, have a bowl. Uh, so there are things you can just use uh, to 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 while away the time while you get back to thoughts. But then it depends on again the context. Imagine you are getting a spoken word, you're getting a you are giving a poetry recital. You 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 can't not say oh I'm drinking some water it doesn't work like that way. So in that situation you look at okay, what are the common cause of people losing their dream of thoughts? That's the fairness and feed. Lack of preparedness, you know how to go around that. And let me just mention this. Normally, the fear of being a people, even before they enter the politics, the state. So the fear actually even leads to lack of preparedness. So normally, there is an eliminate the fear factor. Everything all of a sudden will be on point. Because the fear that you could feed your mind so much that you can even generate the idea that you should. So at the end of the day, you are ill prepared. Okay, so that's what I would say as, as, as how to um, act on stage when when we get into your train of thought. So it won't be on just being on stage, there's also the preparation part and physically the process here. Yeah. Wow, thank you so much for that tip. Yeah. Another question says, please, is there a way to work on making a voice which are naturally soft sound stronger? Instead of it's not sounding boring, is there right? A so, so good question. This is one of the most common questions like it. Now, on the fact is this: you should learn that your naturally sound, sounding sort of voice is not necessarily a bad thing. How many of us know Jordan Peterson? Jordan Peterson is a professor of writing in psychology. He was one of the most leading voices in the conservative movement now in America. In the way. Now, the person has a very shrill voice, very shrill voice. It's, it's annoying hearing him speak sometimes. But then, I realized he's been able to hone his voice to an advantage. When you have a person speak, you don't really get bored. And I, and I was wondering, how has he done this? He uses pitch and then pace. I realized he speaks incredibly fast. He speaks faster than the average person speaks. Not just because he's intelligent, but I'm, I'm sure it's something he has done to overcome that. And I observe also, there's another guy called Ravi Bakaras. Ravi Bakaras is a person of the universe. And Ravi Bakaras similarly has a very strong voice. And I noticed that Ravi also moved very, very fast, very quickly. So when people who have a strong voice, if he, the pace, pace, if you when something is fast, you are, you are naturally tempted, you are naturally Edge to pay closer attention to it. So when you speak quickly, well, people want to know, uh huh, they want to miss what you are saying. And it sounds nice, actually, speaking fast sounds nice, naturally. So you can learn to speak fast and retain your day like I mentioned. Now, also, for somebody who just wants to improve your voice, you say, okay, my voice is too, too soft. You want to improve your voice. I mentioned the third voice exercise. So somebody who has a soft voice, somebody who, who largely speaks from their tools. And even the, the head voice I told you mentioned, like speaking from, from, from your head. Now, you should now work on doing a lot of the voice exercises. That's opening up your chest. So the voice, your voice starts right from your 
is here and then we'll take these last two and then we are done so it says how do you minimize the interjections like a and um when speaking how do you minimize the interjections how do you minimize them well um simply um <laughs> i'm being the end myself already because i'm not there yet like anybody else we do the end because we are not setting what we are seeing or we are building a chain of thoughts. Okay. Now the first thing we you are taught is that catch yourself and listen to your voice. I should have said that already in in, in the slide because there are a lot of things I speak about. The first rule for catching or taking up these feelings you call it speech feelings like I said from your voice is that you should listen to your thoughts speak. If you want to improve what you see and how you see a thing. Listen to how you are feeling it. As you listen to what you are feeling it and listen to what you are feeling, you end up noticing what's wrong with your feeling. Someone says, oh, I have a bad voice. Because you don't even know what is bad about your voice. Listen to yourself speak. Okay, I'm just speaking until now. My voice is sounding too pretty. Now focus. And what is down there? You are seeing a lot of oh, now I'm using a lot of ands and airs and buts. You you take it out, and it is largely because when people speak, they don't have a visual picture of what they are saying, and they don't have a mental map of what they are saying. You learn to build a mental map of what they are saying, so you know, okay, my where I get them to from here from point X to point Y. So you are building your train of thoughts from this point to that point, okay? And as you do that. It will, help, will help you be able to be articulate the thoughts. So it's actually because you don't know what to say. So you should get the vision of what you want to say. And so as you build on that, you would end up realizing, okay, my thoughts are now clear and they are concise. When they are clear and concise, naturally, the speech for less, you would also move out of the way. Yeah. All right. So listen to yourself speak and it would help. I mean, yeah. So the last question here is how do you work on nervousness when you are speaking in front of large audience? How do you work on nervousness when you are speaking in front of large audience? All right. I mentioned already that every single person, without exception, and of course, they take weed or they take some drug, yeah, they feel nervous before they get on things. So there are very few exceptions sometimes, but there would you don't find a person who has completely eliminated being nervous. I was reading a book recently on communication again. It mentioned that the pain is needed is a natural part of things. You have tension because 
your mind is telling that this thing is important. Okay. And in the book, the author was talking about how attention is needed. For instance, he mentions how when you look at a volume like guitar, the attention is needed to build a good sound of the violin. Okay, of the guitar perhaps. If it's too loose, you don't get a good sound. If it's too hard, you don't get a good sound either. So you must the attention in this, you must be that soft and be that flexible. So the tension is natural. So what you do is embrace the sense okay, it's natural to, to feel tense. So tell yourself, what people do is that when they are feeling tense and nervous, they want to fight the feeling. Like you're trying to fight the nervous, you're trying to fight the feeling. No, that is a very wrong thing to do, okay? As you, as you try to fight the fear, the more you try to fight the fear, the more power the fear will go. Okay? So rule number one, you know that it is the natural part of, of, of speaking because your body is telling you this thing is important, your mind is really important. And rule number two, observe your body. We call something awareness. Be aware of your body. When you're feeling nervous, okay, it's characterized by different things. Some people, their hands become very sweaty. Other people, their feet become sweaty. Other people just start shaking all over. But for people who shake all over, before you start shaking all over, there are other psychological um, things that we feel. It. For instance, your stomach might become very, very, very hard and thin. Okay? Uh, so there are different, different things that happen. So become aware of what is happening to you. And breathe. Breathing is so it's, it's, it's the number one thing we see to people when they are feeling that way. Just breathe. Taking a deep breath. And taking a deep breath, allow your emotion to just spread out of your body so that it doesn't so as you're feeling tense, okay, maybe your stomach is very, very hard. Now allow the emotion to just spread out of your body. Just relieve yourself, okay? So you breathe, take a deep breath and out. And you, might, and you just picture the emotion, picture the fear, just leaving you out just like that, okay? All right. All right. I hope, Joy, your question has been answered. So don't fight it. It's natural. It's normal to have to be nervous when speaking in public, and also be aware of the changes that happen in your body when you're nervous. And then take a deep breath, and you'll be fine. I believe this webinar has been a very insightful one, and we are really appreciative of you a lot. Even in spite of all these network challenges, you have still been with us, and we are so grateful for your time. Thank you so much, Elon. You're welcome. All right. Okay. So thank you all so much for joining us for our SIF webinar. As we did earlier, we are we launched our website. So do well to join our wait list. Go to www.vistaedu.com and Share it. Share it with your friends, share it with your colleagues, and then, yeah, let's just join this learning community. So we'll come your way next month with the webinar that will blow your minds, okay? So we are hosting the Ghana Tech Lab boss, George Apia right here on the Vista Edu webinar. Now, if you have any idea or you have a startup, you have a business, whether it's online, whether it's a physical shop, you want funding. One thing I remember he said when we had a meeting is that never use your own money to start a business. That means he has the tricks. He has the tips for us and he is very well aware of how we can start our own business with other people's money. Yes, it's possible he has done it. And so next month, the last Thursday of the month, we have George Appiah to talk to us on how to start a startup without your own money. I will get you the topic very soon. So follow us on all our social media platforms and join us as we have the webinar. Also, next month, we are launching the Vista Edu app. I know you've all been waiting for it for a very long time, but we are launching the app next month. It will be a physical 
physical ceremony so when it's time so follow us on our socials follow us on linkedin instagram twitter everywhere youtube follow us everywhere so that you will not miss this lunch the lunch this is the beginning of a great thing and we really really want to you to be part of the first people to be on board all right so thank you so much for your time my name is Akwili Okai and I have been your host and so thank you and have a lovely evening thank you so much Elam, and thank you to you all who have joined us for this webinar have a great evening bye